Good day, my distinguished viewer. You are welcome to my class. What do I have for you today? Law of indices. Before you can solve any question on indices, you must understand this rule. Because without this rule, there's nothing you can do. And indices is a kind of topic that you are going to use throughout your even when you are in junior school, senior, and institution, you still come across it. So let's look at the laws. The first one says x raised to the power a times x raised to the power b. You know this x, this alphabet, these variables, they are representing any numbers. I'm using variables. Where you have x, you may have any number there. Even you may have any other alphabet. It's still the same thing. So when I say x raised to the power a times x raised to the power b, that means this and this, whenever you have the same number or you have the same variable, you just pick one. So x raised to the power a times x raised to the power b, the x is common to both of them and have one. Because I'm having this sign of multiplication, I'm going to add the power together. That is why I have it as x raised to the power a plus b. The same thing applies to the second rule. I have deletion. You can see this question, is this, this law is the same thing as this. x raised to the power a divided by the x raised to the power b. But when I have division, I'm going to put minus. That is different. The third one is x raised to the 0 equals 1. That means anything raised to the 0 must give you 1. 1 million raised to the 0 is 1. z raised to the 0 is 1. Anything raised to the 0 must give you 1. Why the fourth one is x raised to the a minus a. That will give me 1 over x raised to the a. Now, let's solve this question. Look at this exercise. If you look at this first question, is which law can I use to solve this first question? I will use the first law. The second question, too, I'm going to use the first law. The third question, I will use the second. Sorry, I'm going to use division. I'm going to use the second law. Why the third one, too? I will use the second law. The fourth one is still under the second law. So let's solve this question and we'll move on. Now let's solve the questions. The first one is x raised to power 2 times x raised to power 3. If you look at this question very well, I'm going to use the first rule. So this one is equal to x is common to both of them. I take my x and my power. I just add it together. That's 2 plus 3, which will give me x raised to the power of 5, which is my final answer. The second one, if you look at this, the question, I'm having, the question of y here is not 1, but the question of my x here is 1. So that means I'm going to, more, I'm going to um, expand this. Then I can have 4 times y is to 6 times 7 times y. So we are looking at this now. What will I do? Let me bring it so I will have it as my 4 times 7 will give me 28. Don't forget I have my y which is the power of this one is 6 plus the power of this one is 1. So I have 28 y is to power 7, which is my final answer. The third one, I have c raised to power 9 divided by c raised to power 3. I'm using the second method. So this one just gives me c raised to power 9 minus 3. This is equal to c raised to the power of what? 9 minus 3 will give me 6. The next one, I'll have p P is common to both of them, so I pick one. The only difference is that the power of this one is negative. So I have minus 2. Remember, for division is minus. And this one also is minus 1. When you have two sides together, you introduce your brackets. So what would I have here? This one is now equal to P. This one minus 2. Minus times minus will give me plus 1. So when I have minus 2 plus 1, I have minus 1. The answer of this is p raised to the power minus 1. If I want to write it, I can write my answer using this rule again, which will just give me 1 over p. So either of this is my answer. The next one, d raised to the power 6, that is d into 6 places. I can say d times d times d times d times d times d. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Divided by d raised to the power 5, that is d times d. Times d, times d, times d. So the first part will cancel, this cancel, this cancel, this cancel, this, this cancel, this. At the end of the day, I have only one d. And I can solve it using another method. 
I can write this question as d raised to the power 6 divided, you know this over means division, divided by d raised to the power 5. So the same rule, I'll just say d raised to the power 6 minus 5. This is equal to what? d raised to the power 1, which is d. If you use this method or you use this, your answer is correct. Now let's look at the next question. e raised to the power 0. Remember from my rule, the energy raised to the power 0 is what? 1. So my answer here is 1. The last question, I have 4. I told you that all these variables that I'm using, I'm, I can still use number to represent it. Because instead of using alphabet here, I use my number. So this one is the same thing as 1 over 4 raised to the power 3. So what is 4 raised to the power 3? That's 4 times 4 times 4, which is what? 64, which is my final answer. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give my video a thumb up. And follow me at Matt's Tutor on my Facebook page.